In this video, we're going to go through some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's July 2024 feature update, including things like updates that they've made to some of the features that they have already, like Azure Maps, DAX Query Review, and Paginated Reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Subworld YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Let's start by covering this new feature that they've added to the Azure Maps, which now supports CSV files as your data source when you're adding reference layers. Now, reference layers are basically features in Azure Maps that lets you put shapes or maps on top of your existing maps with the idea of it adding a little bit more context to your data. Now, typically, if you want to add this reference layer to your Azure Maps, you would need to upload your file in the visual and these files would typically be in a format of GeoJSON or shapefile. But now as of this month, you should now be able to upload your reference layers as CSV formats as well. Another thing that I noticed when you go through picking which data source you want to use in your Azure Maps is you can adjust to change it to be a URL, but that URL can now be conditionally formatted. This means that you can dynamically change what reference layers you're using based on some triggers that you have on your reports, maybe a slicer or buttons. I've already covered the Azure Maps Maps visual a long time ago in one of my earliest videos, I think three years ago now, and it has changed a lot since then. So I'll probably cover it again in the near future, covering some of these new updates. Enhanced role level security editor is now generally available in Power BI desktop. This means that this feature is now the default experience that you will have when you hit the manage roles from the ribbon. The enhanced RLS editor is an improvement that they made in terms of the user interface of the role level security, where it allows users to be able to do some uh, basic filtering using drop down menus that are very user friendly without needing to know DAX. For those of you looking to add some more complex calculations around your security filters, you can switch between the DAX editor and the visual editor which will let you customize it to your liking as it was before. DAX Query Review is now available on Live Connect. So this was actually a limitation that I didn't know existed. So basically, if you have a Power BI report that is live connected to a semantic model in the Power BI service, the DAX Query View, the fourth view that uh, you typically would have, would be unavailable. And this is most likely because the DAX Query View is kind of primarily used to create or update dates, measures, and columns, which is uh, something that you aren't able to do when you are live connected to a semantic model. However, DAX Query Review is not just used for updating columns and measures, but also to interrogate and get yourself familiar with the semantic model itself, because it lets you do you know, your select queries that will let you see the values within the tables in those semantic models. So now as of this month, they have enabled DAX Query Review even for those reports that are live connected to a semantic model. You can now add or update multiple measures in the DAX query view. So if you don't know much about DAX query view, I already covered it in a separate video, but uh, one of the ways that you can use DAX query view is to create new measures or updating measures by using the define function. Now, when you write this in the DAX query view, you will see a button that you can click to update this measure uh, in your model. So if you have multiple defined expressions in the same query view, there's no way for you to do a bulk define on all of them. You'd have to click on uh, each of these define uh, expressions one by one to update those measures. But as of this month, you should now have a button that you can use to bulk update all of those define expressions, which is actually really handy. The exporting experience with PowerPoint has now been streamlined. So instead of having the tree from the ribbon menu, when you click the export, it's now combined into this one dialog box. So it just makes this uh, experience a little bit cleaner. There are some new updates to the PBIR 
feature, which is a feature that lets you store your report files in a text-friendly version. Now, there were some limitations when using this uh, file format. So for example, things like you can't export to PowerPoint or PDF, you can't use subscriptions, mobile layouts can be used, or that you can't uh, utilize it using Power BI Embedded. All of these limitations have now been resolved, so you should be able to use PBIR file type formats uh, and have all of these features available to you. You can now add things like parameters, headers, and footers to your paginated reports within the web authoring experience of paginated report. You can add headers and footers, which are primarily useful for things like you know, adding titles to your pages, adding page numbers or execution times. You can now also add parameters to your paginated reports, which basically lets your users choose a value or selection from your parameters before they run the report. These are welcome updates to the web authoring version of paginated reports. Now, if you work with Report Builder or SSRS, you probably will be familiar with these features because they are something that already exists at the moment. And that's really it for this month's update. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was released in this update, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about everything that was released in July, I will leave a link to the uh, full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.